Greetings, Denzians of the Internet, to our ongoing review of The Legend of Korra, or Avatar The Legend of Korra, if you prefer, where we're looking at today Episode 6 of Season 1, and the winner is... Dot, dot, dot. Uh, overall, this episode was uh, fairly good and excellent in that it finally combined what seemed to be two completely separate plot threads. Uh, where we have the pro-bending plot thread and the main plot have finally converged in something that I should have saw coming but didn't. So maybe kudos to the writers there. Maybe me being stupid. Uh, I should have realized that they would probably have tied these two ends together. Uh, basically, the a basic synopsis for those of you that did not watch the episode yet have insisted on listening to a review of it. Go figure. The Fire Ferrets have gotten to the championship where they take on the defending champions who are the most stereotypical defending champions from a children's art and our sports show movie. You've seen it a thousand times. They're cheaters, uh, they're egotistical, yada yada yada. However, after the championship match is decided, our old friend Amon decides to come in and celebrate in his own way by being once again scary as all hell. Mm. Oh yes. Uh, now, I do give them uh, the writers some credit, and then they made Korra and her team lose the match, which isn't a. I mean, come on. All right, these are the first time they guys get in there and they get to the. They're in the championship match. They come in second overall. It's a pretty good season, you must admit. It's not a bad season. Uh, <laughs> uh, but at least at least they don't have the stereotypical we win type setup. But, of course, they did do it where the other team basically continually cheated throughout the entire match. Uh, although some of the things cheating, like, I guess, once again, because it's a made-up sport, you're like... Why isn't the why can't you combine walks uh, rocks and water in the same blow? That seems like it should be a legitimate tactic. But I digress. Uh, after the match is decided and the uh, core and the fire ferrets lose and knocked in the water, well, actually before that, Amon had threatened the fire or uh, threatened to attack the team or attack the stadium, and. The council was absolutely willing to give in and go, no, we're going to cancel it. I wonder what his plan would have been if they had actually done that. Would he have just been like, I can't believe they were that stupid. Who gives in the terrorist demands? Uh, odds are he would have just spun it as a propaganda victory and just would have picked another big public event to uh, do, make his move. Uh, we have that... So he, uh, after the match is decided, they reveal now his kind of big secret. Because the chi blockers, thus, are his ne next plan. Is his chi blockers have always been rather small in number. It looks like there's maybe a couple dozen of these guys top, and you have to get the sense. You get the sense that you know to become a full-fledged chi blocker is very hard to do. These are like elite special ops dudes. Very hard to get these guys. You're not going to take over a city with them. It's like it's like having Green Berets, almost. Only in a world where martial arts matters, and therefore you need numbers. So, I mean, you can't train an army of Delta Force operatives. Because, by their very nature, they're very elite, very hard to train, and require a lot of effort. So you can only produce them in small numbers. Uh... But Amon decides to take advantage, and the set the, the writers decide to take advantage of the setting. Hey, technology has progressed. How can we use technology uh, to overcome our disadvantage with our less trained operatives, our less trained supporters? And they develop these like little risked electrocution devices, which I guess makes sense. Although, why? Well, we'll see later in the season. Uh, they develop these like electrical things, which they use to take out all the metal bending cops that are in the stadium. Uh, oh, it works good. <clears throat> we get the idea of yeah, metal benders, metal electricity, not good combination. But you know, I'm wondering if later on, why don't the cops just decide to add, oh, I don't know, rubber to their suits, put a little insulation, um, 
dumb. I mean, it doesn't take that much to add rubber to something. And, you know, what about fire? You can still do firebending cops and other forces that, again, you can put rubber on. And we know in this setting they can have rubber because they have automobiles. Automobiles have tires. Tires are made out of rubber. So they should easily be able to put some sort of insulation. Maybe maybe we'll see that. Maybe that'll be in the se- uh, the series, not the series, because we know it's been confirmed that there's gonna be a second season. Uh, maybe in the season finale we will see a uh, <clears throat> uh, them adapt to that, to where they they finally take on a big battle and they try using electrical devices and ha ha we adapt it. We put rubber on our suits. Electricity doesn't work on us. Na 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 poo poo. Stick your head in doo doo. Especially the waterbenders, because it appears the waterbenders really don't even need to touch water in order to control it. So, maybe we'll see them adopt, adapt in that manner. Uh, or maybe we'll, maybe next episode we'll actually get to see, like, a military presence. Uh, I'll base that, though, at the end of the episode, at the end of my review, as always. Um, again, very interesting how we see it's the villains who win the championship, but it, it sets up for what they planned on doing. They don't want to have Amon and Korra face off yet. Uh, both because for some sort of in-plot reason, which I'll get to in a second, uh, but they also, once again, are slowly making it... Amon picks his targets very carefully. He puts... He decides to go after the, the reigning champs. Why? Because they're egotistical, bad cheaters. And he only attacks them. He seems to be very careful in who he picks to take their bending away. Which is which is interesting play for him. He doesn't kill the cops. He doesn't kill Korra. So he's clearly very careful into... Now, again, this is partially... Well, not even that's like kill, but he, he doesn't like kind of take away power. Or their, their power. He seems to know that if he pushes it too far too fast... I guess the rest of the world, the, the ideal is the other nations, the Earth Kingdom, the Fire Nation, the Water Tribes, will come down really hard. There'll be like some sort of military invasion to, to crush his uh, rebellion, and he can't convince them, because they're citizens of another country, so they don't have the, the Republic City loyalty. You know, they're being moved in to crush this little revolt. So he's very careful about who, he's do, who he attacks. And he also wants the public support. So he picks a bunch of cheaters, takes their power away, clearly defeats them, which also, again, adds to his ba- uh, badassery, shall we say. Because uh, this is a team that, you know, they did just win the championships, they did kind of beat Korra, and he takes them at one point, very quickly, it was like 3 at 1, and then a couple of his cheap blockers step in to stop the other two, but he takes their power Again, showing, hey, this guy can fight. And he's really damn dangerous. And he, of course, also escapes by somehow they stole a Zeppelin. I want to see how they stole that Zeppelin. I mean, maybe it's not too interesting how they stole it. They might have just walked up and punched the person that was driving it. Or they stole it from it being under repair or something along those lines. So maybe that isn't so interesting. But regardless, they they had uh, they escaped via Air Blimp and Korra. And the rest of the fire ferrets uh, escape, thanks to a fire ferret. Go figure. Uh, uh, I know a lot of people are going to be going, why didn't they... They had the Avatar again, and yet they didn't do anything to her. And I think I have a theory based on that. I think Amon is waiting for Korra to become a full-fledged Avatar. Because he's going to try to take her bending away why she's in the Avatar state. Now, this isn't... Mike, this is an original theory by me. I did read somebody else have this idea online. So I don't take full credit if this turns out to be correct. Uh, but it would make sense. Uh, it was stated in the previous series that if you lose your... Uh, that in the, in the Avatar state, if you die, you, you end the, the Avatars just end. You know, they won't reincarnate. So my theory is maybe Amon has figured out that if he takes the Avatar's bending away while she's in the Avatar state, that either will permanently end the bending abilities of the Avatar, or maybe it'll even disrupt bending completely. So maybe that that 
would make sense. And there's finally a reason. One, there is a reason why he has not killed the Avatar, because his goals can be achieved when she becomes, you know, her being alive right now makes so much is necessary for his plans, and why he like doesn't just capture her and kidnap her, because he needs her to actually become this full-fledged avatar. He needs her to complete her training. So that would really prevent him from ha- falling into that uh, villain, you know, the villain's stupidity, why don't you just kill uh, the protagonist? In this case, he needs the protagonist to actually become more powerful if his end goals are to be met. If that's what he's doing, we'll see about that. Um, on on a side note, we get a few more character things. So it turns out that uh, Chief Bo... <clears throat> not Chief Bo Ling. I was about to say Chief Bo Ling. I'm sorry. My bad. Uh, Chief Bei Fong and Tenzin. Turns out those... Chief Bei Fong was the uh, the other woman that, uh, that, that Tenzin's wife had talked about in the previous episode. Uh, which explains why there's a tension between the two. Uh, it has a little humorous moment. And, of course, we also start having, though, uh, uh, Bei Fong and the Avatar kind of get together. We're kind of Tenzin pointing out, you know, you two are kind of a lot alike. You you have the same attitudes on about a, uh, on a lot of things, and that's kind of the, really the relationship we see slightly developed here, where maybe, very slowly, Bei Fong, uh, Bei Fong gets a little bit more uh, respect for the Avatar, she starts off agreeing, hey, we shouldn't cave into terrorist demands. And, of course, at the end, she saves the Avatar's life, and they kind of fight together against the She-Blockers. So we see that developed. I have a feeling we're going to see Korra... Well, that, that's kind of getting into the next episode. I want to hold that off for one more minute. Uh, give my overall impressions on the episodes. Very good. I'm, I'm very happy that they actually decided to tie into uh, tie these two kind of plot strips because it seems like the the previous episodes had been going on a one episode's the main plot with Amon and Equalist, and then the next episode just dealt with the fire or with the uh, pro bending. So it's nice that we see these two ends finally meet. One, the pro bending stuff is now over because the championship's over and the stadium kind of got blown up. But two, it shows that there's a plan. It, it shows that th- you know this is the big actual public reveal for Oman. You know, before he might have done something, you know, for his followers, he showed his his ability to take the bending away, and he's done some speeches and such. But this is the first time he's gone into a big public arena, done a big public attack. Uh, outside of people that are his supporters, where he just does this for the general public. And so, it makes sense now. It's, it's a, it's, I think this is going to be like that. This is the big event. This is where things have changed in the city. Where the Equalists have stepped up from just attacking triads and kind of doing stuff mostly behind closed doors, and have now really stepped into the full front, and are kind of really starting the revolution, comrades. Now, we're moving into the, the Russian Civil War phase, maybe. So, certainly, I think, plot-wise, this is important. It ends the the firebending, or the pro-bending arc. Maybe we'll see that next season. Again, you know, maybe this will turn into a bit of a the tournament from Dragon Ball. I'm talking about the original Dragon Ball, where Goku really didn't win until the end of the se- uh, end of the series. Uh, now, as for the next episode, which is entitled "The Aftermath," clearly it's going to be dealing with the aftermath. Oh, wait! Before I get into that, we again had flashbacks of older, uh, older, uh, older, Aang. Uh, handling some sort of crisis. We're clearly going to get an episode that delves into that in the future, where she's going to finally kind of learn her airbending and be able to contact, once again, previous avatars, and probably probably Aang, and we're going to get some sort of explanation about what's happening and how that relates to what's going on now. Uh, we'll see... We've only got like a few little flashbacks, but clearly they're building up something to that. 
Maybe she'll learn how to defeat Amon from this, or maybe it's just an interesting parallel that'll kind of re-emphasize whatever philo philosophical message they're trying to get across in this series, or season, I should say. Uh, because as I as I just read, it turns out that there, this Amon thread is not going to carry on to season two. It will end by the end of this season. Although they said there's going to be some themes that, or some themes and elements that will transition to season two. Uh, they're kind of going with a very... I, hate, I like to use the term episodic, but episodic is what they're doing right now. Uh, uh, kind of more like a 60s or 70s or even 80s TV show where one episode really doesn't have anything to do with the other, but it's the same characters, same basic plot. Seems like they're doing that with seasons. Well, so next episode will ha or next season will have its very own villain, but we'll see what they do. Uh, because we should concentrate on the next episode. As I said, it's it's aftermath, clearly dealing with the aftermath of this attack. Uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, we could see that the city has kind of gone under martial law. Maybe there's more attacks by the Chi blockers that are kind of going all over the place, and it's developed into full-fledged like conflict. Maybe we'll see there's a military element to the Repu to Republic City because it is. Republic City is just the capital of supposedly the old Fire Nation colonies, which is United, uh, United something of Repu United Republics, I believe it was called. I forget off the top of my head. Uh, but you know, you kind of have to wonder. Maybe there's a military element out there somewhere. So do we do we see like there's a really real war? Maybe, or maybe it's just they stick with the police. Uh, but it, it, we'll probably see that there's some big aftermath. It's become <laughs> it really has become kind of a full revolution. Uh, Cora, I'd imagine, decides to take up, because they did use the term leave of absence when she quit the uh, task force. So that means she can come back. So maybe she decides to retake up her task. Like, okay, I have to go back and deal with this full-fledged. I have to go take on Amon. So that means going back as part of the task force. Uh, now with, of course, the support of Chief Boleyn. And we'll see what happens. Um... Probably we won't get that full flashback episode of whatever happened with uh, with Aang how many, 47 years ago or whatever. We probably won't see that yet. I have imagined that'll be either episode 8 or 9, possibly 10. I have a feeling 11 and 12 are going to be a two-part finale. So, I believe there's only... Let's see. I believe there's only 12 episodes for the first season. And the next ep next season will have 14. So, we'll see what happens. Um, is there anything else prediction-wise for next episode? I don't think so. I think we're just going to see... Again, okay, what is this... What does the events of this episode mean? Like, is this going to full-fledged revolution? Is this this kind of having to deal with... Well, I don't know on a personal level having to deal with... Because we've already kind of had this with the... Uh, the, the first time we saw Amon take character or take somebody's power away, but we'll see. Uh, and I should stop saying um. <laughs> that is it, I guess, for this episode. It's a, like I said, good episode. Catch it if you haven't. Stay tuned for next week. See you then.